It's time for the big conversations, telling stories of movers and shakers, of industry giants and daring professionals. It's time for the conversations that change your perspective on life, the kind of conversations that shape entrepreneurs and move careers forward. If you don't know where these conversations are found, we are sending you a GPS. But if you're listening to this voice right now, you are here. Welcome to the Growth Podcast. This is the GPS. Alrighty, welcome to the podcast. This is a very special um, edition of the podcast. I think for the very first time we were two guests on uh, the podcast. And these are people that have been here before. Uh, very familiar faces uh, doing um, amazing work in the different spaces. So these gentlemen obviously need no introduction. But if you're here for the first time, you're new, you heard about the podcast yesterday and this is your first day here, welcome. Uh, on my right, I do have Mr. Edwin Ngwane. He is the founder and CEO of Kawiwi. Uh, yeah, and then on my left, I do have Mr. Emmanuel Mokula. He is um, he's a trainer. He is an entrepreneur. He, uh, for me, is just a guru of business. I think there's nothing that uh, he can't do. There's no crisis he can't deal with in a business, and I feel like he's really going to give value um, to you and your business in whatever you do. Gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure being here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Always yeah. a pleasure. No, it's, it's always it's a pleasure. Uh, yeah. how, 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 generally, how is business? It's tough. I think business is tough. I've always uh, mentioned to people that business is tough, but you need mental fitness. <laughs> uh, I, I love to ask people just that to say, you know, sometimes you could be thinking that you are the only one in a certain economy. Yeah? <laughs> business is, business is uh, I'll tell you what, it's, um, it, business has got its own days. And one of the things that I feel we really need to pay attention to is um, if you start a business, you need to be ready for these times. And that is why in most cases, I love to tell people, you need to be mentally very strong because business sometimes will be crazy that you will actually admire somebody getting paid at the month end when you told yourself, no, me, I'm, I've gone to be an entrepreneur. So, but I'll tell you what, we have our good times. And uh, sometimes the good times are more than the bad. And in most cases, when people are complaining, they really just want to focus on the wrongs. Huh? Otherwise, I'll tell you what, I think it's, it's slowly unfolding. There was a time that it was very slow, especially when, you know, uh, you know, government changed and they were trying to settle down and everything. It was very crazy. People were holding on to their money. They were not sure what was coming. But I feel that slowly we are getting some money in circulation. And things are actually beginning to move, and, and it's you know it's benefiting us that are actually doing business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this 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 dollar thing uh, for me has really like affected business, especially those who are in the the import uh, side of business. How how do I cushion my business? Because also I'm thinking sometimes I feel like should I hold off? Let me wait for it to come down. But while I'm waiting, it's still going up. <laughs> <laughs> you see, uh, the holding thing doesn't work. The holding thing like okay, let me hold on to the to the kwacha, let me hold on to the dollar. It doesn't work. What you should always be doing is do, continue doing business. So if the dollar is trading at 22, meaning your pricing should, that 22.5, you should factor it into your pricing, your products, everything. You know, a business must be a going concern. And, and this is where I think all of us miss it. Because whether you like it or not, at the end of the day, there is somebody that is supposed to pay at the price that they should pay. You are not supposed to say, you know what, uh, because the dollar is going up, then I cannot adjust prices. That's a wrong approach. Your job as a business is to ensure that the business survives because it's going to die if you do not, you know, up the prices as the dollar is moving. So as a business, what you are going to do is that is the rate going up? Your prices must be adjusted accordingly. Very important because at the end of the day, if you say no, Ah, uh, what do customers think if I increase the prices and what? You know what is going to happen? You get out of business. I, I, th I think I, I like what it is that Edwin is saying, but I think it, it's also dependent on the sort of business that you are doing. I'll tell you why personally. I think for me, it is something that would be very difficult for most my, my clientele to understand because I'm not dealing with, uh, that's one part of my business really. I'm not dealing with very educated people. And this is not an insult really. I'm, I'm trying to, 
really just classify my clientele. And the last thing that you want is to have a situation where every time the dollar changes, you are going back to them and saying, look, dollar ya kwela so manje na ina lunda vintuvanga. No, that is something that I've really had a struggle with. So there are certain times I feel I've actually, I've actually had to lose. But in most cases, that is felt when I'm not really pushing the numbers. I'll give you a very good example. If let's take, for instance, I am um, getting a profit of, say, 600 kwacha from a bell, okay? And then I notice that the dollar has actually gone up, okay? Do I quickly just go back and say, you know what, manjina lunda. So what you are buying at 4,000, you are going to buy it at 42. No, I'm not interested in that. I am okay with having a situation where I say, you know what, this 100 kwacha, let it go. But can I push the numbers and still get my 500 kwachas? That works for me, where I push the numbers. It's funny how I think sometimes people wonder because the dollar will be going up and I will be talking about how that I'm going to slash prices over the weekend, even by 500 kwacha. I know that maybe I'm getting maybe 800 kwacha from there. And I'm telling myself, if I slash the, let me give you this example. I'm getting a 600 kwacha from this and I am not making any sale because I'm asking for a lot. Then I decide to cut maybe say a 300 and I start making that 300. You understand? Then on that particular day, I have somebody who is saying, I'm saving a 300 kwacha on each and every bell that I'm actually getting. Let me get. Then I realize that on that particular day, I sell maybe 12. What is better? Clearly, I really have not much to lose. I think it's only, maybe, maybe it's because it's a fast moving, uh, you know, product. I, I, I get what you're saying. Yes, yeah. mm. because there are, there are certain businesses where it's not fast moving. Like yeah. I'll give an example, what's happening in the phone industries, electronics, it's really affecting them Yeah, because their margins are so low. Like okay. they are just adding a little bit of some money and every adjustment with the dollar, it messes it, them up. It messes the, the cost price. And then you find that they cannot get more, more phones. They cannot get more laptops. It's, it's, so for, 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 for his business where the margins are broader, like there is at least a good margin, and also there is, a, there is more likelihood that you sell, you know, in mass, you know, uh, quantities, then that's good. But that where are the margins are low and you just have to adjust your prices. The, 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 other, the other issue, Suilanji, could also just be you pushing more. You know, there are times when a lot of people have come to me and they've talked about how that, you know, the cost of living is very high. And someone will ask and say, what's, what's really the answer to this? <laughs> well, just work harder. Make work more harder. money. If you were actually, yes, just work harder, make more money, yeah. and be able to afford. If, I, if, if you are giving your wife a 5,000 kwacha for groceries and she comes back to you and says, mm -mm, manje, things are really tough. You need to give me this. Well, what are you doing as, a, as, as the head of the house? You need to make a plan because... You, and you staying comfortable and just complaining is not going to actually help. And I think that's the problem that we actually have as a country. I will tell you that we seem to have a lot of people who have always, and I think I've had this, this conversation with you, Suilanji, of course, maybe off uh, camera. We seem to have a lot of people that are so entitled. And whatever it is that actually happens in our country, in the economy and whatever, they are busy complaining and trying to, you know, talk about how that is the worst economy that we actually are having. <laughs> Trust me, there is worse out there. There is worse out there. And sometimes I ask myself and I tell myself, look, if you can't survive in your own country with the prevailing conditions right now, stop lying to yourself to say, oh, others are actually having it good. No, because we could be in a far much better place than a good number of countries. Yeah. And for me, it's really just about the mindset. It's really just about the mindset. We are stuck on having a situation where it's, it's, it's a mind that is just entitled. No, the government should come in and make sure the minimum is at this price. No, this should happen and make sure this... No, man. Things, there are so many things that are actually at play. It's just that we also have governments that are coming in and what they are doing is still just playing to the gallery. Tell people the truth about what it is that is actually happening. Even issues of unemployment, issues of the... Just tell people the truth that some things are beyond your control. And you tell people this is what it is that we actually need to deal with. The idea of messaging or rather trying to sugarcoat what it is that we actually are going through is not going to help anybody. People need to be told the truth. I've said the same thing about unemployment. 
<laughs> Nobody is sorting out unemployment, not even the government. Today they wake up and they say 40,000 teachers, 40,000 nurses, 40,000 soldiers. So Ilanji will still have a problem with unemployment. Yesterday, how many people were graduating? Tomorrow, how many people are going to be graduating on Monday? Throughout the week, how many universities are going to have their people out? And when we talk about entrepreneurship, people laugh at us. And yet that is the way we actually need to be going. Why do you think they laugh at us? <laughs> you, you, you see, um, entrepreneurship is considered to be uh, a trade for people that failed that failed at school. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's you our are, subject. You had your choice. Too, right? <laughs> I think I like what it is that you know Edwin is actually saying. Maybe we should start sharing CVs, huh? Uh, and oh begin yeah. to tell people uh, yeah. where we are coming uh, from. Come on, we're looking at somebody that was in the banking sector. That's an entrepreneur. Uh, which well, I worked for the best telecom countries companies in the country. So if I wanted to grow, I would probably be a manager somewhere, maybe a director. Mm -hmm. So these are just paths that we actually choose. Yeah. It's not that we didn't have a choice. Yeah. You know. <laughs> no, I, 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 I get your point. Because I think I was, there was one time um, at, at my place of work, um, this man came to mentor me. How a CEO should be an entrepreneur? Because those things, they say it in there. If he was applying them to his business, yeah. he would do well. He would do very well. <laughs> and, 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 and this is very true. Eh? It's, it's very true. Yeah. Because also, I, I feel like being in management, you are overseas. It's, it's, it's basically running a business, but the only difference is the business is not yours. It's not yours. Exactly. It's, it's basically yeah. the same thing. Yeah. You mentioned the, the part about um, you, maybe cost of living is going up and whatnot, how you adjust. And my thinking has always been one, you've got two options. One, you either man up, like you say, yes. like mm -hmm. you man up, or you cut your expenses. Because yeah. you find there are some people who you're complaining about cost of living, but you are living the same way you were living before the cost of living went haywire. That's true. You're spending uh, and, the same and, way. And you see, there's something that he raised, which is entitlement and being told the truth. Uh, yesterday, I was talking about financial discipline on my page. I'll, I'll tell you that when I saw uh, the, the followers, the followers were dropping. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> like, like, so I asked the question was like, what is it that I've said that you do not agree with? Yeah. that you have to unfollow my page. Mm -hmm. Because I'm saying, guys, if you're going to be unzipping your zip so much, you know, uh, zipping and unzipping for ladies, you're not going to have money. I know you because can't. Because the money, you, you every need, man... You need money for the so Zip. <laughs> <laughs> the zip yeah. should be tight enough. Don't unzip it anyhow. Mm -hmm. that, that one triggered a lot of men. There was also another one where I said... Uh, ladies, these expectations of a man should do this, should do that, and men, you know, you know, going to dates that, you know, you even know that this lady really is not taking you seriously, right? She's just hungry. You know, there are ladies that are hungry. She's just hungry. And she, <laughs> she goes... Now it is ladies that will start unfollowing. <laughs> they unfollowed, actually. <laughs> so, you know, they, they'll just go to... Who, who sent me text messages for the last uh, five days? And then they check out this guy who was saying, oh, we can go to Sarova. And she's hungry, you know? And she goes on a date with you. And afterwards, she grows cold. She ghosts you. She doesn't want, you know, to chat with you. You know what she did there? She just eaten food for free. And men, a lot of men spend money on useless dates just like that. So I was telling men, I was like, you know what, sometimes man up. It could be in families. We are emotionally blackmailed in families. There are people that depend on us like no man's be. You know that the, the people who work in Zambia, even when you go to the compounds, you find that there's this lady who's hustling. She's selling bananas and there. Look at the number of people that are depending on her. Even the husband. Even the husband. You find that she's even taking care of the husband. Yeah, the and, husband. Most likely the, <laughs> and, neighbors. And, and most likely the husband is an alcoholic. An alcoholic. an alcoholic. Even yes. asks for money. From, in fact, not even asks. She even steals. It's he steals. even steals money from her. And, and beats her. Mm. So, so we have a lot of dependence syndrome in this yeah. country where people, the, the people who work, like who produce, are very few. And then we've got so, so many, many dependents. You find that you alone, there is that guy, that guy. And you know, some of them, they're even now using emo emotional blackmail where they say, hey, men have a castle, you know, you know, like such this. Things, such yeah. they will but use again, all but again I'll, I'll, I'll also tell you something, um, you guys. Um, this is something that I've always been seeing about, especially on my page. I love to actually talk about it. I say, look, we need to begin to, and these are things that sometimes I, I, I sit down with my kids and I love to talk to them about it. They are all boys. And I say, look, 
I don't owe you a life. Mm-hmm. What I owe you is your education. And the reason why I owe you an education is because I am your father. So it's my responsibility to make sure that you go to school. You have clothes on your back. You, you are able to sleep somewhere. After that, I don't owe you anything. And I think for me, one of the things that I've really tried to inculcate in people that are around me is just refusing to be dependent on other people. If you are dependent on people, and this is something that starts from marriages, from families, if you are dependent on people, they will never respect you. As long as I am dependent on you, Suilanji, sometimes excessively, you can't have any respect for me because you call the shots. You understand? There is power in being empowered, you as an individual. And we need to stop looking at where we have to start from. You know what I mean? And sometimes when we love to, sh- when we share our stories, people will now begin to laugh and talk about how that, no, but entrepreneurs will come and begin to tell people about how that they started a restaurant with one rice. No, guys, I will tell you what. Sometimes More curry. I'm telling you. And sometimes I love to challenge people and I say, I want someone to, ca- to get up and tell me, I borrowed him a 10,000 kwacha to start a business or even a 5,000 kwacha to start a business, even from my family. I want someone to get up and say that. Nothing. It's been about me thinking, and this is something that I'm really trying to inculcate and trying to put in my son. I tell him, you need to do business where you need to invest very little, maybe nothing, except your knowledge. Mm -hmm. Okay? And there are so many businesses I've started like that. What do I need to go and train? It's my knowledge. Okay? It's my knowledge, my laptop, and done. I have proper presentation, and boom, I get paid. If I'm leaving town, I'm not getting anything less than 25,000 kwacha. Done. The problem that we have with people is that they have certain skills that they believe cannot do anything for them. They should just be playing with them. Yeah. The same skills that we are using to make money, others sit on them. And sometimes I love to really bring it down because I think if you've noticed, one of the things that I love to do on my page is that I, 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 like, I like to remain within reality. You get my point? So I'll talk about how that you've got a sister who every time that there's a function... She goes to cook, and when she does, everybody loves the food. And you know what happens? She ends at thank you, and boom, done. And she spent the whole day cooking. Cooking. Then you have that, this, uh, this other cousin of yours who is very good with electricity. Anything that has to do with electricity, he comes and touches things here and there. They work. Ah, <laughs> they work properly. Yeah. But what they lack is the ability to begin to monetize their talents. I yeah. get paid to talk. But when I was growing up, I had friends who used to tell me that, Walite mwafio kulanda landa. Yeah. But look, I get paid to talk now. You they had put point. negative vibes on talking. Exactly. They put negative vibes on talking. And yet now, that is my, you know, that yeah. is my bread and butter. butter. That's why I take care of my voice. After this podcast, if I've been shouting to Ginger, Chan, Chan. I know that there could be another <laughs> engagement on Monday. Because I need to make the money. You yes. get my point? Yeah. Yeah. We need to begin to teach people how to begin to monetize their skills. People don't know how to monetize their skills. And more than anything, we need to let people understand. And sometimes I love to tell people, they say, look, have you ever wondered why you've gone to college, you graduate as a nurse or you graduate as a teacher, and six years down the line, you have not got a job. But you know, you are very good with business. And yet you don't take it seriously. Well, maybe you went and studied something that is wrong and God is asking you to look the other way. I'll give you a very good example of myself. I did HR, and more than anything, I would have wanted to be HR manager, maybe HR director. The whole time I was working, I never held a job in HR. Mm -hmm. At Airtel, I was in customer service. At MTN, I was in customer service and sales. At iConnect, I was in sales. At Radiant Stores, I was in sales. I lived in South Africa with Polymer Art, I was in sales. No HR job. But then I had the idea of talking. I love to teach. And I'm saying, how then do I begin to, inco- to incorporate my HR you know, skills and what it is that I actually do? Well, today I train HR directors and directors. Exactly. Using the same HR issues because it's a need. And we do that. We have a lot of people that are busy giving excuses with so much money in their hands and they don't even know it. And every day, I love the idea of having an opportunity of just reaching even four or five people and just trying to open their minds up and telling them to say, look, you are wasting your time. I was talking to a certain gentleman when I walked in here. He does our courier for Salaola. That gentleman was working for Majandu 
okay? I sat him down and I said, because every time we took something for sending, he was very good. You know, he would communicate very nicely with customers. He would, you know, get their details. And we even felt like pressure had actually come out because the order would be having calls from customers asking us whether we've sent, who is sending and everything. And, you know, this guy comes in and he takes care of all that. I sat him down and what I liked was the fact that he developed a serious liking in me. So I said, this is a nice one. So I sat him down one day, two years ago. I sat him down and I said, you are wasting time at Majando. Ah, bossy, nam wish ba bossy kind of kutan enough mana van tuaba, you know, de team ba chef ye. And I said, I'll tell you something. You can leave employment and still live in a very good way. But you see, it should not deter your growth. But as I'm telling you, you are wasting time there. I asked him, how much are you getting? And he told me how much he was getting. And I said, to be honest with you, you can make that kind of money maybe in a day or two if you are serious. Boss Nish Mulela and I said, come to the office tomorrow. Let's have Angry Lion. He likes Angry Lion. We sat down at the office and I told him, go to Pakra and register a courier company. And I'm guaranteeing you that me, I will give you not less than 15,000 kwacha business per month. I guarantee that I'll give you that. You have and a client. What, and you are already doing that. I need to actually introduce you to that guy. Today yeah. he will tell you that if you had not opened my mind, I probably would not have moved in the house I was struggling to build. Two years later, he makes his money because every day we give him not less than 1,200 to 2,000 kwacha for our sending issues. Every day. And out of there, he returns a 50%. How much is he making? We have a lot of people today who are busy making their bosses rich and even the boss knows Yes. That without this person, mm -hmm. my business would die. But the one that is actually working does not actually know what is in them. Exactly. And we need to begin to awaken that in people. Instead of us just complaining, no, there are no jobs, no, there are what, no, I need to be a cadre. It's a waste of time. And, and you see, <laughs> talking about skills, eh? Mm. Uh, the, the things that are making money nowadays, uh, the things that are making money nowadays, are funny things. Let me give you examples of these TikTokers. Uh, being, you know, when we we, we launched Kawiwi, we we're looking at uh, which kind of influencers can we work with. And we said we are going to work with micro influencers. And you find there are these kids that are doing amazing stuff on, on social media. And they are not doing, you know, there are these videos that people wait that it has to be polished, it has to be done in this way for it to be made. But we've got kids that, you know, they just get a camera wherever they are, whether ni combo ni, whether ni kumayadi, wherever, ni sit market, whatever it is that they are doing, but they're making videos that people are watching. And you find they have got, you know, engagement up to 23K, you know, 45K. And when you look at it as a business owner, I'm looking at those are eyes. I can have eyes look at that kind of, you know, this video and then there's, there's a brand so there is so much we are in content creation mode right now where people can just create content and make a business out of it so you know we were talking about things that people look down on mebula shana shana you know you like dancing add a structure and, to that dancing yes and people people <laughs> and say <the> fee. <laughs> yes people will start saying abanabo that mm -hmm. is the first thing that you are going to get negative vibes around it yeah when you're doing TikTok, there are people who are going to say, you know, that TikTok, that, that, that TikTok guy, that TikTok guy, they'll kind, they kind of make you feel you are uneducated. That's, why, that's the reason why maybe you're doing those videos on TikTok. But you find that if you do it consistently, like there's a lady in South Africa who she just realized that she's good at uh, miming Lil Wen's, uh, Lil Wen's uh, songs out of liking for Lil Wen. And she started one video, made another video, second video. Right now, she's about maybe 600 followers just like that. 600? 600 plus followers. 1,000. 600,000. Oh, yeah. 600,000. <laughs> that, those are good numbers. 600,000 followers good numbers. somewhere there. Mm. And she says, I didn't know how I got here. It's basically out of passion for what I like to do because I like Lewin, because I like... Even, so there's and, and, so and, and, you know, much and, and, we you know, can do. Th th there's a lot. And, and, you know, one thing that people need to understand is that, you see, if you're doing something that is you're passionate about, 
it's it's really not work. And yeah. I'll tell you that the way I live my life today, it's if I go for work, the way we are doing this, this is not work for me. I love to do this. Mm-hmm. Okay. I go to train. It's not work for me. I love to train. I do I I, I can do it for free. But if I'm being called by an organization that is even willing to pay a lot of money, I am even happier. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. S- I, I, yesterday I was talking to, you know, uh, staff for a uh, staff of ZCSA and I was saying the biggest problem that you have with growing your career is that you want to be who you will never be. You 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 don't know how to choose your your space. You 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 come to the workplace and every day what you are doing is you are competing with another person who will never be you and you will never be them. You don't know how to harness the gifts that you actually have and begin to follow your passion. You don't know how to do that. And that is the biggest problem that we actually have. This is why today we have people who, if you get into an organization, sometimes you want to ask and say, what is their role? You really don't understand because they are in HR one minute, the other minute they are in sales, the other minute they are trying to control people that are cooking in the that are doing tea in the kitchen. You really don't understand them. But if you are they are all over. That is wrong. Sometimes we need to get to a place where we begin to pray about these gifts that we actually have. And I will tell you that there is no pl- there is no I love to ask, I love to tell my wife this, and sometimes I love to tell the kids, especially when I'm talking to them about entrepreneurship. I say you know, if I actually stayed in, in employment and probably even became manager or something, I love to tell them to say I still would not be able to take care of you the way I do. I probably would not have what I have right if now. I were working right now the way I actually do. But it is because I think God opened my mind up very quickly and I followed my passion. I love to speak. I lo- There's another engagement that I recently had that made me feel very nice about speaking, you know, and I, when I hear people, uh, you know, uh, bragging about how much they make for speaking, I felt very good. Mm. I go for this to this organization that told me you are coming to speak and they told me you're coming to speak up to about 300 people and tell, tell us how much you are, you, are, you are going to actually ask for. And I told them 300 people and I need to come to Livingston, no problem. I need 50,000 questions. And they said, that's too much. And I said, okay, no problem. Let me do this. I'm going to charge 250 per person that I'm talking to. 250 only. Do your math. It was more than 50,000. And I said, so give me 50,000. And I said, it's not, that's not even all. I want you to pay, give me two rooms where I'm going to actually sleep. Because I need to get my driver and I need to get my guy. And I'll be with my wife. And you need to pay for fuel. Ah, no, but look, it's too much. And I said, how many are you? You said 300. Let's be serious. 300 people. And I'm going to take two days away from myself. I'll be traveling on one day. Then I'll be talking. And after that talking, I'll start coming. You've taken two days of my time. Okay? That's what I need. I need a 50,000 kwacha. You can take it or leave it. So when we went there, they delayed to start the program. So instead of giving me an hour where I was supposed to talk, they gave me 30 minutes. In the afternoon, we still sent an invoice for 50,000 plus all the other expenses they were supposed to actually have paid for, and they paid that. Yeah. Now, you see, I went to play in Livingstone. You get my point? And I came back with 50,000 kwacha. The point you've made reminds me. <laughs> there, was, there was one time, there was one, time one, of, one of the banks was having their um, Africa CEO come. Yes, yes. So they told me, no, why don't you come and do an interview with him, and this is the money we're paying. Um, the interview is 20 minutes. I was like, oh, okay, cool, I'll come. We agreed. Then later on, they come and say, no, in fact, it's changed. Instead of 20 minutes, the interview is, um, is, is just under 10 minutes. Yeah. So you have to revise the quotation. I was like, no, it doesn't work like you that. You can't revise you the quote. quotation. Look, to be you... Honest, it's, not, it's, yes. it's not about the time I'm yes. going to spend there. One, it's me, mm-hmm. and I've worked on being me for all this exactly. time. You are not paying me for that time. <laughs> for the, you are no. paying for the investment I've put in myself. Exactly. For this time. You know, I'm, and, 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 and me, and me I'll would, I would tell you something, guys. And I know I'm talking too much. I, I, listen, there's a lot of people really have failed to attach a price to the things that they are very good at. Yeah. And so maybe we should organize a workshop and begin to talk about how people can monetize their skills and let them come with those skills. And let's talk about that. We'll open a lot of minds. People don't know how to attach a price to what it is that they actually do. And this is the biggest problem that we actually have. This is why when you look at a place like America, everybody calls it a land of opportunity. Do you know why? It is because they celebrate anything 
Anything. They celebrate anything. You find a guy doing gymnastics in town and everything and he's making money. You know what I mean? You find someone that is doing stand-up comedy. Sometimes I don't even get the jokes and they are millionaires. Mm -hmm. You get my point? Mm -hmm. And believe me, that is the trajectory that we actually need to get on. But you see, if we must get to a place where we begin to appreciate your skills, Suilanji, please show me your seriousness about it. You need to show me your seriousness about it. When did I learn this? There was an organization that I gave a quotation to, and I was very quick to tell that organization to say, but don't worry, we can negotiate. This lady told, <laughs> I, I I'll tell you what, that lady, she's South African, that lady denied me an opportunity to do work with them, but she also told me why. You have reduced your price. Yes, she said, yes. as far as I'm concerned, I feel like you are already going to compromise on the quality of work that you are going to give us. And it opened my mind up. And sometimes I fight with my wife because she's very good with pricing. And sometimes I'm looking at a situation where I'm saying, but we need the deal. So can we give a price that is competitive? And she says, no, don't do that. Because these organizations know why they come to you. They know what they want. They are coming to get. So give them your price. If they want to negotiate, don't indicate that you want to negotiate. Let them come to you and negotiate. And this is what we need to begin to raise in people. People should build their self-esteem and begin to understand that within them is a talent that someone can actually pay for. Anything that you cannot do on your own, Suilanji, and you ask another person to do it, just pay for it. You can't do it. You pay and, for and it. On, on pricing, Mr. Mukula, <laughs> just, just a, a heads up for, for people that are influencers, uh, for people that are musicians, and anyone who's in this uh, content creation. Eh? But same is, same like is, any... Yeah. The other way to handle these prices is have a secretary or a brand manager. You know, I am the only... If, if I'm the guy who's being approached... I know where I'm, I'm at. You know that I don't have money. I'm broke. So mm. you know that kind of emotion. You, but you know that's the that's the same reason why you want want to have a secretary. You want the court to come to you. <laughs> no, because again, you have said the secretary also after ten percent. I don't know. I mean? so. No, my point is, people don't don't negotiate with the secretary. Uh, what happens is that when people go through a brand manager or a secretary, usually. They cannot, because you are going to say to the secretary, these are the standard prices. And the secretary will give those standard prices. But when they are talking to you, even when in your personal business, you should check out. When somebody comes direct to you, Mr. Mkula, yes. you end up giving them a discount. But think about it. Do you think your employee would do that? I know they it's won't. It's not their business. So, yes. like, yeah, like so they can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. So to resolve the issue, if you're a content creator or in any service business where you feel pricing is an issue, especially people who know you, put a, a, a face in front of you. I, 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 I think I've actually done a lot of that, especially with the CVs and because yeah. most of the people are making them for somebody I worked with, oh, yeah. you know, a relative. Yeah. So... You are very right, and I think it's worked because yeah. then they are just talking to somebody else. But in terms of pricing, also, th th there are some people that are, are scared to really add the correct value to the work that they do simply because I'm scared ah, they'll go to someone else. You get the point? Or they'll go to someone else. Oh, I'm doing it for the relationship to open the door and whatnot and whatnot. They're, they're, and to find people really charging less than yeah, what the actual value is. Actual value. Let me tell you something, Suilanji, and something that I was actually talking to one of the guys shooting this. Uh, Gideon, huh? and I was saying, can we create a brand and let's work on the LinkedIn thing and everything. Let me go back and begin to talk about why it is important to create a brand. This is something that we need to know. We always need to remember this. People buy a product that they know and understand, mm -hmm. period. They buy a product they know and understand. That's okay. So as a person that is giving that service and you know you fine-tuned it and it's something that's very good for people, Create that brand. Let people know the market brand it. behind it. Market the brand. Like Let a people prostitute. know about it. And it should not be about... You see, I'll tell you something. People want the best. Okay? People want the best. And believe me, they are coming for the best. But the problem that we have is that even when they come to you and you know you are giving a good product, the question is, who knows you? 
You get my point. And that's the difference. And sometimes, I, yesterday I was talking to people and I was saying, you know that they, we have got two types of people that are looking for jobs today. We have one who will go to an employer looking for a job and they will say, give me what you can. And we have another one who is saying, you know what, I'm not getting anything less than this. You get my point. Why? It is because they believe in what they're actually able to offer. They believe they are, that they, this is what it is that they're actually worth. And the other person doesn't. When you become, when you are offering a service, when you are a content creator, whatever it is that you actually are doing, create a brand around it and let people respect that brand. Create a brand around it. I have told my guys at the office and I'm saying, if you are talking to someone for training, and this person is talking about us leaving town and we have to spend a night out. If they are talking about a 20,000 kwacha and less, or let me just say less than 20,000 kwacha, and I have to leave home and go out, don't entertain them. Tell them, take it or leave it at 20,000 kwacha. Take it or leave it. And that should have the fuel and everything. You know why? The reason is very simple. You respect the brand, well, pay for it. It's, it's that simple. You, it is upon us that are actually creating, uh, that are actually giving these services to raise our standard. No one is coming to you, Suilanji, and begin to tell you that, oh, no, Suilanji, these are the standards that you need to have. This is what it is that you actually need to do. No, nobody is coming to do that. You need to raise your standards yourself. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, let me give you another example on that. Eh? Uh, talk of books, uh, because I'm an author as well. Uh, hustle like a West African, flip the coin, and um, how to market and sell like a prostitute. When I first, first started writing, uh, I've always priced my books at 200 from the word go. You know the feedback that I used to get from Zambia? Oh, these international, you know, international writers, you know, I can get their books for 70 kwacha at Book World. I'm like, go get them. Go and get them. Simple. I'm, I'm not those. I'm Edwin Ngwane. You want to read my story? You want to learn how to market and sell like a prostitute? It's 200 kwacha. Uh, the imposter syndrome is always there. Uh, we need also to understand that. The imposter syndrome is always there where you feel, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe, you know, I haven't reached that stage yet. We're talking Doubting about... yourself. Huh? Yes, we're, we're talking about you, Suilanj, being that brand. But you find that the way I feel about you being that brand might be not the way you, you feel, feel about your about brand. Your yeah. brand. You <laughs> could be <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I think, and I think, you know, Edwin, I think you are bringing in a very, very interesting, um, there's a really interesting twist to this. Yeah. This is why, some, and let me not even say sometimes, you know, it's very important for us to surround ourselves with people that really want to bring the best out of us. It's mm -hmm. really important to really choose who we want to surround ourselves with. When you don't have the right people around you, it will be very difficult for you to even understand just how good you are with yeah. something. That is why your association brings impartation. Yeah. You need to get to a place where you begin to surround yourself with people that are going to bring the best out of you. People that are going to match up with the dreams that you actually have as a person. Yeah. You see... <laughs> so <Ilanji. laughs> we, we, we need we need to we need to get serious about these things. Mm -hmm. We need to get to a place where we begin to manage our talents so well and begin to have a life out of them. You get mm -hmm. my point? Mm -hmm. I remember a time that I wanted to actually quit work in 2012. A friend of mine who is still a very good friend of mine today told me that if you stop work and go and start to do the training, the motivation and everything, you will not have money enough to take care of your children. Believe me, it will not sustain the life that you want to actually have. Those still ring and I still remind him. A lot of people today are living way below the level they should be living at because they've held on to something that does not even belong to them. They've not paid attention to things that they are very good at. There's a gentleman I work with. His name is Waza. This gentleman here. Oh, uh, yeah, my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Know him. And I tell him, stop. He worked with me. He was under Splendid Trainer Zambia. So one of the things that he was actually doing when he was at Splendid Trainer Zambia was to design CVs and everything. Okay. And I don't mind talking to him even on air. Even if he hears, he knows I have that relationship with him. So out of that, even when he left Splendid Trainers at some point, he then began to do that which he learned at Splendid. I had no problem with it. 
interview coaching, uh, the CV designing and everything. And he started doing that. And I said, let me tell you, I'm not telling you this out of jealous. I'm trying to take you back to the place where you belong. You are a graphic designer. You are a branding guy. And you are amazing with that. And I love to tell people I look good because of him. But you see, he has not attached the right price to that. Because even when you go on his profile, nobody knows what he does. People think he's a CV designer. So he's falling into people who literally went to school to begin to understand how a CV uh, works. But he spent so much time learning this skill that he's not actually using. And I was telling him to say, do you know that there's a boy I kept when I was staying in Matero? I kept that boy. He was starting as a graphic designer. I think it was about six months ago when I was in South Africa with my wife. He calls me and says, I need to see you. Okay. And I said, no problem. Come to the hotel where we are. And he drove there. This guy, this boy is living large as a graphic designer in South Africa. He's living large, driving a nice car, not on loans, he bought cash, driving a nice car, properly married, and he's living well as a graphic designer. And I was telling him, do you know that when I look at the quality of work that you do, it cannot be compared to the quality of work that he does. The problem is you keep running away from something that you are very good with. And that is where the biggest problem is with and a lot of people. And sometimes because society feels like this is not <laughs> good enough. You yeah. know? And and because the, the, yeah. the, the other time, um, I was actually even telling telling people, um, and, and I was like, sometimes we we begin to make life decisions based on what this one's going to say or what mm -hmm. fits society. Yes. So mm -hmm. right now, to be honest, it's not fancy to go to an event and say, oh, how are you? Oh, I'm the CEO for Zanako. Oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a graphic designer. If you're like, ah, my one, you get the point, I, I right? actually yeah. change so, the name to branding expert. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. branding and mm -hmm. communication. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah. But really, the thing that is really building who you truly are, yes. that is what you want to put in the back. Yes. And then you go and say, what will make me likeable? What will make me good. acceptable and, you know, mm -hmm. fitting? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So most people really struggle with that. And then also, the, the, earlier on, you talked about something in terms of, and, and I have a comment on this, on loyalty, where someone is stuck in a job they don't like. The Majando example that you mentioned, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Not that sometimes you like it or not, but you're holding on to it because you feel like, mm, like the one thing from nowhere, my person cheat. Mm. Actually, see, actually, yeah. the guy, the guy even tells me that, you know, when Majando boss say put a bala for ever lengele atinch the moto kayandi ya fest. That exactly. <laughs> point, right? So I feel this sense of loyalty mm. may not just be to. And most of people find it's to an employer or mm. it's to a boss or it's to what or it's to someone who you started with and you feel like you can't branch out on your own. It's like disloyalty. You know, he's not yeah. grateful. He left me after everything I did for him. Yeah. And most people find 10 years, I'm just stuck there, not making progress. I am here because I feel like I must be loyal to this person. Actually, let me comment on that. Um, whenever... I mentioned that... And, I, and that also applies to... You know that people who, for example, it's a saloon, right? I teach you how to plait hair, blah, 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 and make you very good. And you're scared to start your own you know, uh, saloon business because... Bazani on a branch. Bazani on a branch. Exactly. Like I've betrayed them. Yeah, I've betrayed yeah. this person. Uh, when, I, uh, when I mentioned to people that I, I left Standard Chartered Bank, there are two or three things that people mentioned. Uh, like they mentioned, just tell people, you were fired. <laughs> 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 That's the best thing. Like mm. uh, people say, uh, just tell people, you know, just don't, you know, don't start saying, you know, I left Stanchard, I left. Stanchard. Just tell people that you were fired. I just laugh over that. Second thing is you were not good enough. Okay. You were not good enough at Standard Chartered Bank. Then you just decide, ah, no, this career is not working and all that and all this. You know that if your career was going so well. Why did you stop? You could No, uh -huh. you couldn't have left. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, recently, I, I don't know whether you saw my page. I had to share my performance history with Standard Chartered Bank, which I used to get, you know, uh, awards uh, of excellence every year from Mizinga Melu. I got from and um, and you were there that long? Yes, Mizinga was my first uh, MD. And Okai, Kasekende, yes. all these CEOs. You got awards from. Them. I got excellence awards from them. So what does that tell you? I was an excellent employee, but that does not mean I should continue with Raban. 
in, you know, Rabban in the Bible? Yes, yes. Yes. I shouldn't, call, it doesn't mean if I'm doing so well, then it means I should then stay with Standard Chartered Bank forever, especially when my vision conflicts with what, with I want, yes. what you know, I saw my vision. I asked myself, what do I really want? Do I want to retire? Do I want to this? And my answer was no. The moment it, be it became very clear that, you know what, this is not the direction I want, I had to step out. And I said, I am going to make this decision at a time when I'm actually doing very well. I don't exactly. need to be frustrated. For me to leave. Actually, I left when Stanchard was offering money to leave. <laughs> And they didn't want me to leave. You know, you know those things where you are doing, no, that person should go that person. Then I apply to leave. You know, <laughs> you know those things. Yes. Because I know there's money here. Yes. And uh, to the loyalty part, this happens even in businesses. There is a business that does not serve you well. But maybe it's because you, you know, feel... You know you know, I know you just feel this business. I started it a long time ago, but this is like selling CDs. You know, those guys that were selling yeah. CDs. I used to sell a lot of that when uh, I was at when and I then, was working for Airtel in 20, <laughs> in, in, in early 2005, 6, 7. Oh. I that was my. I, w I was the supplier. <laughs> and, you, <laughs> and you know that it's going down. <laughs> burning CDs. No, 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 no. I wasn't selling. burning. I would just buy from, you know, the, the guys that were actually doing them and then oh, I would sell. Yeah. So I would buy already made. You know, if you needed any movie. Or oh, those and movies that know in yes. America, they know it's season one. Yes, yeah. yes. Oh. It's season four. <laughs> I went to Seed Market recently and I found somebody selling seed. I just told them, bro, find something else to do. Mm. This business is dying. I don't even know what whether... Mean dying? Dead. It's, it's dead. It's actually dead. It, yeah. I, I may be in, there are in, very few people <laughs> that actually have... Um, you know, one of, one of my guys at the office used to laugh at me, my, my previous vehicle that I was using, there was a CD, CD player. And yeah. I said, but look, what this is an it? original, you know, yeah. this is an original system. <laughs> and even the one I'm using at least as, as a CD player, but it has, you know, this Bluetooth and what. I said, but it came with it and it it's came original, it, yeah. so and, let me and, use and, it. And funny thing, actually, you know? the CD produces better sound than any of those. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, but let's go to the business yeah. side. <laughs> on the business side, it, it has died. It has died. Because we, we are need using to move it. on. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No. So in terms of loyalty, there must be, you must be loyal, but the, when there is a conflict between your purpose, your vision, and that which you are loyal to, I yes. think choose your vision and Can your I, purpose. I, I, I'll give you a very good example of uh, these issues of loyalty. You know, the, um, there's something that we need to understand. I sometimes love to, I can be very candid in the way that I actually talk. Sometimes I love to tell people, sometimes you have got very foolish loyalty to certain people. Because when you are loyal, get the benefit of being loyal. You get my point? And this should not stagnate your growth. Mm -hmm. So if it is anything that is stagnating your growth and you are calling it loyalty, then you are misplaced. Mm -hmm. There is something that you need to begin to do. One thing that we need to understand is that, you see, we all want to grow. And there is somewhere we need to actually start. So if yes. I'm working with you here and I'm doing something with you with this podcast, and then I later realize to say, you know what, there's something that I can actually do that's related to what it is that you actually are doing. Well, I shouldn't feel very guilty about telling you that, you see, there's something that I'm actually starting and I want to leave and do it on my own. I will start small, but I want to see where it actually gets me. And if you mean well, as my employer, should support you it. should let me go well. And you should give me that blessing. You know what I mean? And, the support. and I think sometimes you also need to be very mindful of the people that we are loyal to. You get my point? We need to be mindful of that. One thing that we also need to understand is, listen, why do you want to mentor people that you want to be at the same level? Then what's the point? What, what are the results that you're getting out of there? Yeah. If I mentor somebody, I want them to do better. Exactly. I will tell you that uh, I upped my game with uh, my secondhand clothes business when I introduced my brothers and sisters to it. You know why? Because I introduced them to, to it not, because, not for them to come and fail. I wanted them to succeed. But then I also did not want to be left out. So they were busy making their money. And I told myself, no, they are making their money. Now I need to up my game. I will also tell you that out of me exposing my brothers and sisters to that business, I became better at it. You understand? Yes. Because I was telling myself, I think I have competition. 
Yeah. Yes. And I need so what that happened what that did was that it also made my service delivery better. You understand? Mm-hmm. I'll give you a very you. good example of who mentored me with this thing of our trainings and everything. Today if you talk about training and who is doing the trainings, guys, not to sound our own trumpets, our names should come up somewhere. In meetings where we are absent, it comes up. That's why we are getting the the works. But you know who mentored me? The man is still doing the same work and he's still very happy with me. But you know, he's moved on and he's doing the other stuff and he's really big. Okay? Not afraid to mention him because I've posted him on Facebook before. Kelvin Sokoni, managing director, KSM recruitment. Yes. Mm. That's the guy that mentored me and he told me how to do this and how to do that. So why was he telling me how to do all this and that if he really didn't want me to actually do that? So now he's very happy and he's proud. Sometimes I call him and he tells me, you know what? You're wasting my time because what you are asking me, you know how to do it. You are ripe. Go ahead and do what you are supposed to do. He's happy. You need to have loyalty towards such people who even when you decide to leave because you are ripe enough to leave, they support you and say, go out and go and be the best you actually can be. So we should not stagnate our growth because we believe we are giving, we are loyal to certain people. No, it should not be like that. We need to allow a situation where people can grow out of certain situations. I don't, if I meet Gideon today, and this is what it is that he's actually doing, and then I meet him tomorrow, and then he's looking the same, staying in the same house, dating the same type of girls, I will tell him, boss, you are not growing. And I expected better. Why? Because what we expect is that even when you are mentoring somebody, you should be happy that they are actually growing. That is why we mentor people. And when they become competition, you need to up your game. Edwin, I know I'm taking, I'm, I'm taking a bit of your time, but let me say this. A few, a, few, a few months ago, I'm seated in this training room and this guy is telling me that, you know, Imano, I'm getting frustrated because... I have been in this organization for quite some time. And what happens is that there are people that come into this organization. I teach them how to work. And when I teach them, they go out there, they get promoted. Even me, I've been promoted. But you see, sometimes people that I actually teach even go out there and get better jobs. So is it fair that I should actually continue just pouring into these people while I remain in the same position? And I told him one thing. I said, let me tell you something. What is the qualification that you came with in this organization? And he tells me, and I told him, let me tell you where the problem is. The problem is that you are empowering people and you are not growing yourself. That's where the challenge is. Came with and the principle and is very simple. The, the principle is this. You can't grow anything if you are not growing yourself. It's, it's a very serious principle. The business that you are doing as, a, as, 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 as Edwin will only grow to the extent that you are educated about that business. Mm -hmm. Period. So when you begin to grow people and you want them to come to a certain level, you now need to begin to challenge yourself to do better. Absolutely. And you go out there and get the knowledge. Mm -hmm. So go out there, share the knowledge, feel empty if you have to. But that is a challenge for you to now go out there and get Get more more knowledge. If you are a real mentor, trust me, a few days ago, I was actually talking to Mianda Katiwa, Mianda yeah, Maimbo. Yeah, yeah. And she was telling me, you know what? I am very proud of you. I'm really proud of you. I'm proud of what you've actually done. I used to walk to Mianda to get advice on how to start certain things years back. And she remembers that. I remember she would throw CVs at me to work on. One of the people who I actually did a CV for that was a reference was the managing director for that cup there best life okay she gives me and she says you know work on her cv and she was very happy and to date i even built a good relationship but you see i am now dealing with a person who is doing well with what it is that she's actually doing and then she's seen this person who she tried to mentor grow also and she's very happy that is true mentorship don't mentor people and want them to be at the same place and even you that is being mentored need to understand that me remaining loyal to this person at what cost is it am i Telling myself I need to go to a certain extent before I leave or I am already ripe and just giving them foolish loyalty. I call it foolish loyalty. So we need to be careful with that. Well, uh, the, the, the other bit I wanted us to, to talk about was there are some people who you leave your job, right? And you start business. And mostly those who work go like, let's see how far he will go. Because <laughs> he thinks he's in so pus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you go into this business, you try and the business fails. 
how at what point do you know you know what there's no shame in closing a business that's not, that's not working like if it's even let me shut it down try something else or i don't know worst case scenario go back to your job how, how, how do you deal with that kind of thing? uh and 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 let me tell you uh this is this is a very important conversation uh, because i've had it me and my wife okay so we had uh, uh reached a point where the business wasn't doing so well like things went bad and then my wife was like wouldn't you want to to get back even just for a short term you know wouldn't you want to do another you know like get a Contact. job just for you know just for for the sake of this storm that we are facing right now i need to mention two things one you as the entrepreneur there is that pride that says uh, because we need to be to be honest with these conversations there is a pride in an entrepreneur of saying I wouldn't want to go back to the job. You know why? Because most of entrepreneur, most of the entrepreneurs, they leave the the job with kind of some hate. Like, no, I can't do jobs. Me, I'm an entrepreneur. I don't want to be an entrepreneur because those things are low things. And you want there is that pride attached to leaving the job yes. and becoming an entrepreneur. And when you follow that pride so much, so much, it will get you stuck somewhere. You get stuck because maybe. At the time when you are having those challenges, maybe to to get some form of money to pump back into the business, all you need is a job at that particular time. And I told my wife, if I got a job right now, I don't have a problem with it. And when I called one guy that I said, you know what, I wouldn't have a problem with, with getting a job. Do you have a job for me? You know what he said? Mm. No, I'll just send you some money. You pay me back. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you get the, you get my point mm -hmm. but i was willing to do that to, to do that because there's nothing wrong there's no shame in having a job we need to to be yeah. say there's I'm, no I'm, I'm, shame I'm, in having a job one, one other thing that we need to pay particular attention to suilanji is this edwin i think i don't like entrepreneurs that come out like those that are working are wasting their time no we not everybody is an entrepreneur, just like not everybody is built to work for other people. Yeah. So there's really nothing wrong with working. There are people who, whose fulfillment comes from the dream that they have of becoming a marketing director somewhere mm -hmm. or a CEO somewhere or a human resource director somewhere. So paths are different. You get yes. my point. But when we begin to talk about this entrepreneurship, we are trying to open the minds of people and tell them to say, you know what, actually you can even have a job and still want to be an entrepreneur, the decision you make is entirely up to you. Do you want to leave it totally or do you want to stay in it? Because I know people who are working yet pushing big on the entrepreneurship Absolutely. side of things. Yeah, so there, there's nothing wrong, really. Uh, there's nothing wrong with um, uh, being, uh, you know, going back to your job if, you know, you run out of cash. Because at the end of the day, business will sometimes, you know, they'll go bad, you run out of cash. There is nothing wrong. I, I think the, the biggest challenge I think most of us have is the tag. Me, I'm an, inter, I'm an entrepreneur, so I can't go back to a job. No. An entrepreneur actually has to use whatever means available to raise capital, to raise funds, to inject back in the business. Because, you see, the long term is still the business. The long term is still the business. Yes. So when you talked about also leaving a job and then you are the guys that you are working with maybe saying, you know, we'll see how far it will go. That is there. This is Zambia. Uh, this is Africa. It's there everywhere. Uh, mm. Yes. It's actually there everywhere. Yes. Mm. Because you see, me, most times when you choose a certain path, which is different from the crowd, the very first question that other people are asking themselves is that, does he think he's smarter than us? Yeah. So from there, remember the story of uh, Joseph and the brothers. The moment you cast your vision and you say you're going to be king or prince or whatever, then the other guys are saying, so this guy thinks... He's smarter than us. He's smarter than us. So it's there, whether it's at, you know, even, even at, at work. There, if today you tell people that me, I'm going to end up CEO. you see what's going to happen to you. This is why I'm, I'm so not lying. Just work in silence. You know? just, just work yeah, in silence. That's, that's why people say what. I think sometimes this idea of you can't work in silence, neither can you do things in silence. I think for me, it's who you share with. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because if, I'm going to, if I'm going to come to you and I'm sharing a plan on what business I want to actually start, 
I am obviously telling myself there's a certain level of intelligence you are using as you are grasping, getting this information from me. And I'm also happy with the advice I'm getting from you. It's not discouraging. It's encouraging. We'll, of course, talk about the challenges and everything, but you won't discourage me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think our problem, like I said before, we need to begin to be mindful of the people that we surround ourselves with. Like he said, nothing wrong with working. And I think we need to understand that people should be encouraged to follow their passion. If your passion is to become an excellent employee and end up in a certain position, go ahead and do that. If that makes you happy. If that makes you happy. Mm -hmm. If you want to be an entrepreneur, go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I'll tell you that with me in my, you know, um, in my family, I am one of the people that actually, I'm the first person that got up and told my father that I'm quitting work to do my own stuff. And he didn't like that. Because I'll tell you that I think for me, I've been, I've been fighting with him from the time I finished my school, even before I finished my school. My father was in the education system. He retired as inspector of schools. So he had his connections, huh? With mm -hmm. even these teaching for teaching, you, uh, for, yes, connections <laughs> for the children, <laughs> these um, teaching uh, teaching colleges and everything. Yeah. So I finished my school in 2002, and he was telling me you need to go to Muflira Teachers Training College because you need to become a teacher. And I didn't <laughs> want to do that. I wanted to do HR, so I went and did HR at Nipa. At first, he wasn't very happy with it, but he came to terms with it. Then I started work with Airtel. He was over the moon, okay? When I told him I was actually leaving, leaving. Web, he was very upset. I bounced back with MTN. He was happy. Then I went to Pepsi. I did this. I did that. But when I now just told him, okay, I'm never going back. He, I think I'd come to a point where he was saying, let him do what he wants. But can you imagine every day I would get a call finding out because I had already two kids, huh? Mm -hmm. So every day I would get a call finding out if I had me at home. Yes, he would so call that to find out that. So that yeah. but to make okay something <laughs> to wonga. But I also wanted to, you know, move out of, you know, that whole thing. That is out. Let's talk about the situation now. Actually, I'm going to pick him up immediately after this show because they are visiting. Uh -huh. If he called any day of the month and said he needs money, there is somebody you can call, and that probably could be me, because mm -hmm. he knows he will get it anytime. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The starting usually is rough, and you have people doubting you, and now what has happened is that I've now brought even my brothers into this. I've got a brother of mine who is assistant registrar at Zikas. Mm -hmm. he's, he's already contemplating. Maybe I should leave because he's already started his own school, you know, and then I had a brother, I have a brother who is my immediate elder brother, he was working, had a very good job with the mines, lost that job. And I told him, you know, you have so much knowledge and then you are getting very good money. Chances are you are not going, going to get a job that pays you better. Start doing something. He was very hesitant. He started a firm. He's, it's called Ideal Labor. Today, the way he is doing, it's a marvel. Mm -hmm. they, are doing far, they are doing very well. He's hired people that are lawyers working for his firm. And yet he only gets called to the bar on Tuesday himself. You understand? Mm -hmm. And we, we, we need to give people their space. But we also need to allow a situation where people can be told of their strengths. Sometimes they don't even know that strength, mm -hmm. those strengths. So he's being called to the bar. And he's extremely happy. We need to... I've been a very stubborn person, I must say. I've been a very stubborn person, and I'm also very... One thing I'm very happy with is the fact that I married a woman whose father was an entrepreneur. She never... She only saw the father working in their early stages. She was three, four, five, six, you know, maybe ten. The father is working. And after that, he was just doing his own stuff. And, you know, he, he did very well for himself. God rest his soul. I, I married my wife, and I made it very clear to her. And I said, I'm never working. Okay, so you are either in this or you're not. But the last conversation we're ever having, you and I, is a job. We are not ever talking about the issue of me getting a job. Two years later, she quit her job. And we now work together. And we are doing it. Peer pressure. And, 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 <laughs> yes. And it's the, good peer and pressure. Good peer She's pressure. happy. <laughs> yes. That's a power of association. Mm. And then to, 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 to mention something about support. I remember you shared um, <clears throat> a post recently that if your friend does not share your business 
Okay. Yeah. I, I think. Yeah, I remember that. One. I like that post. You, yeah. If that. And people are saying, no, friendship is more than just supporting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you know, sometimes, sometimes, Suilanji, it's it's amazing how you really get some words out of my mouth with your posts. Huh? Yeah. And I told myself, okay, is this guy reading my mind or something? Very provocative. Yes. And yeah. <laughs> so 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 you see. That post where you said, uh, if somebody does not uh, sponsor your business, uh, does not promote support, your business, support, yeah. support your business, even just by sharing a post and all that, then they're really not your friend. And I, I have even to challenge the three of us here. He, uh, me and Mr. Mukula, we have, uh, we have uh, some, you know, some history. I went to him when I said uh, uh, there, there is a boys without fathers, uh, you know, conference that we need to do. Though we didn't do it, we postponed it because of other we, logistics we, we issues. Do it. Because we will still do it because it's a it's a charity event. I want to you know to give back to the boys. And you go to him and he's available for you. It shouldn't end there. If he's struggling in whichever area and he approaches me, young man, uh, this is like I'm coming to you over mm. my book. Yes. I'm saying, can you please help, help. me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, help me in this area. Mm. There, there should be support. It might not be the support he needs, but there must be some form of support. You see, like I was saying to you when before we started this show, I said, all this world is full of cartels, whether you like it or not. There is a UPND cartel, there is a PF cartel, there is a Democratic cartel, there is a Jewish cartel. They, there are so many cartels where people work together as groups for the benefit of members of that group. Mm. Some, of, some could even be churches. You see this church where they help each other even find jobs, they help each yes. other get business deals. They are, these things are always there. Your job is to create that cartel for yourself to say, who should be in my circle? Is it... Um, uh, you know, it's Wilanji, there's Mr. Mukula, there's that, uh, you know, there are so many other guys. So you put a team within yourself, you create yourself a network. When you see how people move, you can even tell that that's a cartel. That mm -hmm. those guys, how yes. did that guy move uh, from Barclays? Then he, that CEO moved from Barclays, went to that. That guy you again. You even moved. know how they actually move. You, you, you even yes. know how it's the there. movement we, is. We, we know that yeah. professional cartel. <laughs> <laughs> you know that professional cartel. Those are Mr. Mukula's boys. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad thing. Mm. Create that thing for yourself. But I'm also saying, you know, instead of wishing wishing your friend that has left you the job badly, like, no, they are going to fail. What if they succeed? And they're going to create something that is going to benefit you. And you see, for me, that's the thing I always talk about, because to be honest, where you are, Mr. Mokula, mm. where you are, Mr. Ngwan, and where I am, I should pray and hope that you too succeed. Exactly. Mm. Because, because you future, have children, eh? You are my children's <laughs> connection. <laughs> and, 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 that's yeah, you that's true. Yes. That's because very true. Look, if you live a life, where you're wishing everyone fails. Yes. Then your children, I know life, no course, I don't know anyone. Where would they go? No, because your father was... I, I, I think, I, I think, I, I think Soilanji, I'll tell you that a lot of people, a lot of people, I think there's something that I'm really good at that I wish people were so good at too. People don't know how to build their security around them. And this is the network. You can't be an island. And that one of the things that I love to tell people is you see... Humility is very important. Understand where you are coming from. Understand the people that I've seen you through. Appreciate the people that are helping you and build these networks. I've got friends who, my son is only in grade 10, okay? And a few days ago, I'm talking to one of these guys. He's my friend. And I'm telling him, you know, one of the things that I really, really wish to see is just my child graduating from college and, you know, at least picking up from somewhere, and I don't care the job he has, but let him grow from there. And he's telling me, for the relationship that you and I have had, mm -hmm. I, I can't say the organization. He tells me, you immediately, he leaves school actually, give him a year to be in Mumushi and I'm going to give him a job. He, he needs to learn. And the job I'm going to give him is not one that is fancy. I'll give him a job where he learns the, system. the systems. And I'm telling myself, why would somebody say that if really they've not, they don't really appreciate the friendship that we actually have? Mm. 
Actually, you know to I give mean? you a story, you know the Rothschild. Yes. Uh, their child graduates from school. They send them to a friend who owns a bank. Yes. To go work as an executive assistant to the CEO of that bank. Yes. Five years later, he's coming back to run his father's bank. Exactly. So, so, so we 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 need we need these connections. We need yeah. them. But again, when you are starting a business, and Ed, Edwin, like you were saying, when you are starting a business and you are looking at the support of friends, I have one thing that I love to tell people, and I wish people can actually get this. When you are doing business, don't play safe. I'll give you a good example. A few days ago, I realized, you know, my Facebook personal account has been blocked for, I think, I don't know what I did. I shared a photo for somebody. According to them, I didn't have rights to it. They blocked me and I, I was unable to use it. I was able to save my page because I made my wife admin. So I created an account and then I became admin to it. So the whole time, I think the last three months, I've been going through her account to operate my page. I'm happy that at least I was able to return my page and I actually created an account. So within five days, I have been able to connect with 5,000 people. And now they are just following. Five days I've been able to do that. With business, I don't play it safe. And this is what I mean when I say I don't play it safe. When you build a business, when you are trying to build a business, market it beyond your circle of friends. Market it beyond your circle of friends. And sometimes I love to tell people that sometimes your friends might not even support you. And it is those people who you just get to meet and know that begin to actually support your business. So if you are starting a business and you want to be really frustrated, my advice is start a business and only adv advertise it to four or five friends. I can rest assure you chances are that none of them might even come for that business. But that has to change. It, yes, it, it should that, change. That should but change. I'll also tell you that you see the problem is that we don't have power over that. Uh, so yes, what I you agree. are looking at, Edwin, yes. is your security. Mm -hmm. Can I just advertise my business beyond my circle of friends? Because someone out there might be interested in it. No, I'll, and I'll then tell from you there why, you why. begin to... Yes, please. I will tell you why I, I am interjecting here. Yes. Because you see, if mm. you are my friend, yes. then my business succeeds. Le, well, you I didn't mean, support. I, 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 no. don't, I don't disagree with you. Yes, I know what you don't I'm, I, I'm, is, I'm you sending see, a message to Sulanji, the Zambians. If you are my friend, yeah. Edwin, you are my friend, I don't want to hate you because you've not come to buy a bell from me. Are you getting yeah, my point? Yeah, yeah. So, can I feel nice that other than you, there are other people that are buying my biz, uh, buying my stuff, and when I come here, we can talk about this and not have that thing of ah, but you know you've got a sister that sells salaula. Why haven't you told them to come and buy from me? No, I don't want to look for reasons not to want to connect with you in other areas because you've not come to me to support my business. What I want is a situation where I just build my security by way of advertising my business so well beyond just my circle of friends. That I don't even feel the impact of it. That, that I don't even get to feel. Because I'll tell you that sometimes you even begin to pressurize friends that don't even need your product. Genuinely, they don't need it. But because they are your friends and they are the only ones you've advertised to, the only place you are looking for sales from is them. So you then begin to look at them as a customer and not a friend. That just begins to affect the friendship. I get your And point. that's why I am saying, for anybody that's starting a business, my advice has always been, don't play safe. Connect with as many people as possible and see who can actually support your business. And sometimes, in most cases, those that even pay well, are those that you are not even familiar with. Yeah. I agree with you. <laughs> and they don't even, even I, I agree yeah. with you. Mm -hmm. For the entrepreneur mm -hmm. not to depend on uh, the friends, I agree with you. But the friends, this is a challenge to the friends, support the businesses of your friends. That's true. It's Because these are the same people you will go to. Yes, that's very true. And if no one is successful, mm. you're safe. But, yeah, unfortunately, but, but, but unfortunately, so I'm like challenging said, people. You know, we have no control over that. Yeah, yes, we have yes. no control, me, but mm. let's challenge the problem, them. The problem yes. we have is this. The problem we have is that we think support is financial. No, it's not. Support no. is, oh, you've posted, I've shared. Yes. yes. Support is, I'll recommend. But there are some people who don't want their friends to thrive that I know you do. <laughs> <bills. laughs> I know, <laughs> no, listen, I know that Mr. Mukula does bills. Eh. Someone calls me and says, what, do you know anyone? 
I don't ah, know. Sini ziva. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll go on Facebook. Chef Saba knows and give them a number. I give them the number. I don't even know. Mm. That's as long not as right. That's not right. Buy from that's not exactly right. why. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's an issue I have because yeah. you see, uh, um, I'll give another example. Is imagine I come to you today, um, invest in my business. You refuse, right? You refuse to invest in my business because you know you don't see the future in it. Then the business starts doing fine and you want to bring your 20,000 20, kwacha to come and invest in my business. <laughs> and if I say no, is that wrong? No, it's not wrong because I feel like what has changed? Do you believe in it? Now you believe in it. You, and the uh, price, yes. Like you are an opportunist. Huh? Yeah. Yes, you are yes. an opportunist. You are not a friend. Well, you know. Yeah. 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 But then also the, the, the other thing um, is I, I know you talked a bit about pricing and this is uh, as we come to an end I know you talked a bit about pricing some people's businesses struggle because they're not getting the pricing right. Yeah. So for example you find you are in like you do Sarauda right I, I import from uh, let's say China the things have arrived I go and pick them up that going to pick them up is me spending money exactly. Got, someone must pay for that right? Yes. But you find others just look at how much they buy how much is a dollar okay let me just add uh, 200 I just dream the numbers. Yes. <laughs> I, I never would there's no yeah. cost. Yeah. yeah, there's no. Uh, how there's do you no properly costing. come up with the price for this particular product and feel like, mm, okay, I get value for it and the business doesn't feel like it was shortchanged? Firstly, you obviously want to be competitive. You really want to be competitive. You obviously, you also want to sell quality. And out of that, and one of the things that I really love to talk about every time, I'm, I'm a sales trainer myself. So I, I love to tell people, don't sell with the price. Sell value. Don't sell the price. Sell value. If I come to you and I'm telling you, look, um, here is a Benz. It's very nice. It's comfortable. It's what? But look, don't come to me and sell me a Benz. I'm not interested in it. Not that I cannot afford it. I don't have use for it now because my work requires me to go to see Avonga. My work requires me to go to the Copper Belt on this bad road. My work requires me to go to Samfia. That's my work. So sell me an SUV because I've got, you know, a need for that. So if you come to me and the SUV is slightly higher, but it answers my needs, I'm going for it. I don't mind paying an extra, you know, paying extra for it. And I'll get it. We need to sell value. If you come to me, and you are telling me, I'll give you a very good example. I, I hope you don't charge me and give me a quote for, for this, uh, uh, an invoice for this. If you come to me and you tell me, why should people buy your salawala? You know what I mean? I'll tell you that because I sell quality. There's no compromise at that. I sell quality. No two ways about it. I'm not selling to get rid of so much stock. I only pay for what I have been paid for. So are you getting me? I pay the supplier for what I have been paid for. So I don't have a thousand bills to get rid of. No, I don't. I am going to my supplier to pick the one, I'm going to the best supplier of that product you've bought for me. That's how I operate. So if you come to me and you're saying you want children's clothes, I have three, four, five suppliers. I am never going to the one whose quality is compromised because I want to sell. I want to sell you quality so that you come back again. And then there's another person who wants to sell because they've got a very big room with salaula that they need to get rid, get of. rid of. That's not my way of selling. My way of selling is quality so that you can tell your friend. And that's how it has been. That's how it has been. So sell value. Don't sell the price. Sometimes they'll even say, but Imano salaula is a bit expensive. Well, I tell people, cheap is expensive. If you want cheap salaula, it's not me you are finding it with. Go and buy the chips alaola and see what actually comes out of it. So we need to move away from the idea of just talking about the price because people are not interested about the price. People are interested about the answers to their needs. Are interested about the answers to their needs. Does it meet their needs? I have bills that I sell at 8,000 kwacha, but I don't advertise them. But people ask for them and I will tell them, for your needs, I'm selling you this one because it's a premium bell. So they will get it and put it in a shop and somebody will think it came from China. I have boutiques I can point at and you believe they actually come from China. But I sell them that. I have shirts I sell at 6,500 a bell. They are premium. Go to a shop and you find it's the only one but looking like it's brand new. Do you have bells for blazers? Yes. 
Yeah, so <laughs> the other aspect, the other aspect that you mentioned is uh, I, I would take from an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur yes, yes. point of view, mm. is um, you need you know many businesses collapse because of poor pricing. Yeah, like you said, if you are not going to take into account of the costing of the product, the transportation of the product, the shipping of the product, the taxes that you paid the government, the rentals of your shop, uh, the workers. All those things, because they, fa- you, they have to you be factored factor them in. in yes. And then you add your margin of profit. If you're not going to be doing that, then you're going to be thinking, there are people who sell, sell, sell. And you can say that, you know, these guys were really selling yes. and they went bankrupt. But they are still struggling. And some yeah. are struggling. They are and doing some, it for sure. Yes. You know? That's not a business. You are just trying to show people that there is a business happening, but there is no business. Just at, yes. You are just trading. You are just... And wasting your time, actually. Uh, yes. It's you know? very important that you take, uh, that's why an accountant is a very important uh, person in your business if you don't know anything about accounts. But if you don't want to hire, learn a bit of accounting so that you understand that there is a costing aspect to your product that you must account. Even in the Bible it says account. So you have to account how much have we spent here from the time we got this product up to the shop, up to the month end. How much have we spent? That should be factored into your prices. Otherwise, if you don't do that, you know what's going to happen? You're going to be spending on all these things and then your you account uh, cost versus the profitability uh, sales, there's no profit. You are in a loss. Yeah. Gentlemen, our time is almost up. Um, maybe if you've got anything else to say that uh, you may have been disturbed or interrupted. But <laughs> our time is almost up. This is, it's, it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing conversation all the time. Every time I come here, we have really, really amazing conversations. And, you know, my prayer has always been that we stay open-minded to, you know, opportunities that actually lie within our reach. I will tell you that we have a lot of people, and this is something that I want to go to people who don't have formal jobs. For some of you, the reason why you don't actually have that formal job is because you are failing to monetize the skill that you already have. And God is looking at you and saying, how could my son be so blind? How can he be so blind not to see the God that he holds in his hands? This is something that a lot of people need to pay particular attention to. And I will tell you that for a number of people, it's already been communicated to them. It's already been communicated to them. Oh, I love how you cook. But the problem is that, number one, we've attached a lot of pride. Number two, we look down on certain, you know, uh, professions. certain professions. Number three, we are not willing to start small. You understand? We are not willing to actually start small. And we need to get to a place where we can tell ourselves, if you are panchile sapala, Mm-hmm. If it for mm-hmm. us to see a blessing, there must be a point at which it was not so much. And for us to see and say, by Edwin Bali Bapala, we are looking at where Edwin is coming from. Mm-hmm. And we are saying he was here and now he's here. But what he did was that he started. Yeah, I mean, you can't improve if you're not started. If you're <laughs> yeah. Started, eh? yeah. Yeah, because even, cause I, because I even tell people that sometimes uh, you find, um, if I find people pushing, pushing a car, and I help them push it. And that car goes to Livingston. The one who's in Livingston just sees all the cars in Livingston. But they didn't know that, oh, this car actually is <laughs> <they're laughs> down somewhere. Yeah. 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 Someone was pushing, pushing, yeah. pushing yeah. it. Yeah. Point, eh? yeah. Someone yeah. to push it. But we don't yeah. see that. We just really, because the thing with entrepreneurship is we want to see the glory, like the lights. And yes, that's what yes. everyone yes. wants. Uh-huh. That's what yeah. everyone wants. Oh. Mm-hmm. Because there was one time I was talking to one, one, one lady, she had a shop at Manda Hill. And she was telling me, Sui, every month end, I sit in the bathroom and I just cry. I have no idea what rentals. Mm. But you, when you go out there, you just see all the shops, they're making yeah, money, they're, yes, they're happy. Yes. And they're happy. Uh-huh. Yeah. And yeah, there's a lot yeah. that goes behind There's a lot the that scenes. actually goes a lot. But, most people but, 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 but one thing I'm going to challenge you with, Sui, is, um, Sui Lange, is um, begin a program that can even be say monthly. You have the numbers, you have the influence. Begin a program. And believe me, I know what Edwin would buy into because I've done some work with him. Begin a program that we can run brand it in a way and just be available. Maybe that last Saturday of the month where we gather the youths together and we give them these tips. We're not looking at making money out of it. Maybe we are looking at the connections and who we can mentor, but let's try something like that. You know what I mean? Every month, we've just branded it. Every month we are hosting this event and 
We are allowing people to come, share their experiences, share what they are going through, and we advise on how best they can begin to realize these, you know, dreams, begin to wake up and see what it is they actually have within them and begin to monetize these things. We should brainstorm on that. Yeah. Mr. Yeah. Nguyen. For me, as, as I end, uh, first of all, I need to mention that uh, we have a platform called Kawiwi. Uh, there is an app called Kawiwi that people can use, so, like business owners. Uh, business owners, you can sell through Kawiwi. Uh, drivers, you can drive on Kawiwi Driver. And those that have re car rentals, we've introduced, uh, like, you can rent out your car. Uh, some people that want to go off-road, like uh, he said, he wants an SUV. Maybe he doesn't want to buy now, but you can rent it on Kawiwi. So we have a platform where we are allowing people to rent out cars, to sell their food, to sell their, yeah. their clothes, sell their products. That's amazing. So that is something that we think every entrepreneur out there should take needs, advantage needs. of. And for those that are looking for a taxi booking, you know what, use our platform. Kawiwi is a platform for you, Zambians. But lastly, I need to uh, uh, insist, we, we didn't finish this conversation, me and Mr. Mkula. Zambians learn to support exactly. the businesses of your brothers and sisters, of your friends or communities. Because true. at the end of the day, those are the people that are going to build your families, your communities, everywhere. Because you don't expect to just see your brother successful. There must be an input that you, you know, you played in their success. Let's not be the guys that are like, you know, uh, you know, you are fighting your own success. Because one successful person in our family, it's a success for all of us. I'm telling you. Let's learn to support our brothers, friends, colleagues in business. That's very true. It's very important. Earlier I was telling you about how it's different with Nigerians. So you see yeah. Nigerians, one guy succeeds. It's goes all to of the them. UK. And Everyone everybody goes, the goes yeah. there. But with us, <laughs> at the expense of, of, of being misunderstood, with us, if you have a white friend, you want to be the only black person around the family. So you yeah. Want to block your other friends. Uh, yeah. You want to be the only. Yeah. 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 I'm telling you. It's yeah. crazy. So, yeah. And uh, I look forward to having you guys also at the masterclass for public speaking. When is that? When is it? Uh, in December. I'm having Actually, I shared that post. Yeah, yeah, when that. when is that? You. On the 2nd of December. 2nd of December. Yeah. Please, we'll be happy to come. Yeah. If you can give us what I'll to come. do there, we'll be even happier. <laughs> <laughs> even as, uh, as an Asha. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. let's. You know, yeah, I, I'll tell you what. I think it's it's a good spirit we are building, and I pray that we don't only talk about it, we but begin it. to implement yeah. and be examples to people out there. Yeah. True, let's and, support and, and, each and other. And for me, really, I'm I'm inspired by your your passion for Salaola business. Um, for, for, someone, for someone, for someone of your, of, <laughs> of your <laughs> you know, for others, it's that business where it's, it's yeah. a secret. Uh -huh. It's a secret. No, 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 Even I, deliveries just send someone. No, know, no, no. I, I can't stop that. <laughs> yeah. People need to know the face behind it. Yeah. I can't stop that. It's got its own challenges. Trust me, I fight with people. But you see, I'm that stubborn person. Huh? I'm very stubborn. Comes. And we have to keep going. Yeah, because uh, there was one post I saw mm -hmm. on Facebook where someone was saying that what business is there that people look down on that makes money? And someone said plumbing. No, and someone said plumbing. Uh, yes. Oh, yeah. But yes, who wants plumbing. to go and say I'm a plumber? No. Yes, that's in the, the problem. The plumber, you know, I'm a plumber or whatever. Yeah, no, people like uh, just want to, you know, low key. Want, low yeah. key yeah. 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 We, have, we have time for everything. There are times when we wear these t-shirts and jeans and get into Salaola. And trust me, I've got times for a suit. Yes. I think you've seen me wear a suit at some function. Too many times. A nice, a nice suit, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Actually, overalls to suits. Eh? You know overalls to suits. Yeah, you know. Where the man, because me, I, I, as long as the man is clean, man. Yes, you know, that lady just be clean. Late, the late Garam Khan was even telling me, mm. some of you even just putting no frizz for sale. Hey, but I'm not a boutique. Hey, but I'm not a boutique. Hey. But... Fuck up a nyumba. We Actually, my kids up. say all those things. <laughs> we yeah, need. We know? really need to wake up. Yeah. Yeah. And then also the, I mean, the time has just gone. For for me, also the issue of inculcating that business mind in your children. Ah, that when we sh we really need. When we, we really get really need that right, to, where your start business to, in twenty years will be there because your kids ah, we, took we, over and, and then they, they build happy, on it. I'm also yeah. happy with the fact that you know, I've already identified one of my kids who is very interested in this. When I hear I'm going to meet a supplier and I'm with him, he's very happy to interact with them. I'm very happy with this. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll keep, joke, we'll no matter keep pushing. Big, your family will never get it. They will never, mm -hmm. they will no, never I, get I it. At, at manager Pierre Azesco, I mean, in your family, no, no. 
We yeah. and at your barrio, there's a guy acting manager who's also there with the shovel. Yeah. 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 And they've moved on. Yeah. He's, actually, he, he's even uh, preparing his files. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, it's yeah. a pleasure. Yeah, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. So-